We're here at the Portland Art Museum in the Jubit Center for Modern and Contemporary Art in front of Marcel Duchamp's landmark Boite en Valise, the Red Box Series F. When I hear the word valise, I think of something you could carry around. Like a suitcase. Yeah, like a suitcase. I think my grandmother used valise for suitcase. Exactly, and we use backpack. It's a right. new nomenclature. Duchamp, at the end of World War I, had seen the destruction in Europe. He was a painter. He saw his brother injured in battle and die. He came back to Paris and he said, my work could be lost for the ages. And he decided to reproduce everything and make his own history, his own museum <laughs> in a suitcase. He packaged himself. Absolutely. In a in a new and, a, and completely unbranded way, he reproduced the new Descending a Staircase. Mm -hmm. All of his cubist and vaguely surrealist paintings on reproductions. It's like a, a retrospective in a box. Absolutely. You know, and the interesting thing about this box is that he updates it twice so that the box here at the Portland Art Museum is a box that he created as an addition for Schwartz in Italy in 1960. How many are there? 100. Like, there are 100 boxes. In the red version. In the red There's version. a green version, a leather version, and a tan version. The earliest version is actually a valise. It's a, a real leather valise. valise. Uh -huh. Because these are mechanically reproduced objects, mm -hmm. he had a little cottage industry. Mm -hmm. He prints a bunch of them, but they never get assembled. And so when Schwartz comes to him in the 60s and says, I want to do the Boite de Valise as a real edition. Ah. Duchamp says, okay, I happen to have a stack of them right here. I never put them together. Ah, cool. And so his wife, Tini, sat in the Paris apartment gluing the reproductions onto these black cardboard backgrounds mm -hmm. and little labels they had made, and they created this retrospective in a box. And there's something to me that's sort of about the idea of the artist uh, packaging himself, selling himself, almost like a traveling salesman, go around to galleries and try to get their work. There's something about that well, sort of artist in the commercial environment to me. Well, as a curator, I always immediately pull back when someone introduces themselves as an artist because the modern artist carries carried slides and now they carry an iPhone with their entire right. work on it. Right. Sort of like Duchamp, but in the technology of today as opposed to the reproductive technology of his age. Mm -hmm. What I find interesting and beautiful about this is the variety because he was both a painter and a sculptor mm -hmm in the sense that the ready-made was a sculpture. We have a but tiny version of a euro. Is ready-made? Absolutely, the entire thing was a ready-made. Mm -hmm. He gave us his life's work That's to that date as a ready-made surrogate <laughs> for the experience. Mm -hmm. None of it's an original print in the sense of an artist pulled plate numbered and signed, right. but in fact, these are all mechanically reproduced from images that may or may not have been an original work of art in the, in first, place. In the first place. Right. What's, what's great to me about it is that there's this kind of embracing of mechanical reproduction, which is sort of the whole, you know, a, a thread through all of Duchamp's work, right? This, and a sort of loss of the aura in Benjamin's terms, like the specialness of the original, yes. which was always a sort of issue yes. that Duchamp confronted. You'll notice that this object is sitting not in 1929 when he first conceives it, but it's sitting here in the Jubit Center halfway up in 1960, mm. 1970, when America discovers the ideas of Duchamp. Right. When Duchamp Pop. becomes the grandfather of Pop right. and of Cindy Sherman mm -hmm. and Richard Prince yep. and all of the artists who practice yep. appropriation That's and right. simulacra. That's and right. Yeah. And Sherry Levine and all of that. Absolutely. Sherry Levine could not exist without Duchamp. And this, uh, this little miniaturization of them too. <laughs> It's like little souvenirs. So, oh, you want your little Duchamp souvenir? Yeah, sure. This is it's like your Warhol. Little, your you little know? vial of the air of Paris right here. <laughs> Have fun.